Stocks and bonds are two common names that are used in the investment world. One is perceived to have more risk and the other is perceived to have more opportunity, both over a period of time. When you hear the word stocks, we're talking about equity or ownership in something. And the change that can happen to that on a short-term period of time, the COVID environment, can change a lot of a person's portfolio. On the other side, you've got bonds or what people call fixed incomes. And the old story is that you just sit back and clip coupons and nothing can go wrong. Well, folks, I will tell you that there are periods of times when stocks and bonds will misbehave, sometimes separately and sometimes together. On Consider This Program today, we're going to break down that power couple, or in this case, very often, a power struggle. Well, good morning and welcome to Consider This Program. I almost said the Financial Enhancement Group, but welcome to Consider This Program. I am your host, Joe Clark. And I'm Aaron Rayum. And Aaron is our Director of Financial Planning uh, at, the, at the Financial Enhancement Group. Happy to have you along. We are talking about power couples on this, uh, on this program this week. And we're going to start it off with two of my favorite things. Well, at least two of our favorite tools, Aaron. Sure. Stocks and bonds. Yeah. So run as you will. So, uh, you know, stocks and bonds are a big part of people's portfolio. It's something that's talked about uh, all the time inside of the offices, inside of Financial Enhancement Group. And most people think they do similar things. So... You know, stocks, bonds, what do they actually do, Joe? Well, see, so, you know, so here's here's what I would say. And there are people who believe they do the same things, right? Mm-hmm. There are people who, and it's not as much anymore. I think the 401k world kind of changed that. But yeah. there were people who thought you were either in cash, as in certificates of deposit, CDs at a bank, or you invested in these crazy things called stocks and bonds. And they really thought they were, they were similar um, because price can vary. Mm-hmm. And what's happened over a period of time is, we got into this school of thought. Now, I've only done this for 33 years. I started two weeks before the crash in 87. But I was taught academically that their stocks and bonds acted opposite of one another, the fancy word if you really want to be smart. So this mm-hmm. is your quiz word for the day, negative correlation, right? Wow. <clears throat> yeah, that's a big one, right? But no, that, that was the concept that they would, uh, they would go in an opposite direction. And so in your portfolio, you should have to have stocks and you should have to have bonds. Um, because when one's going up, the other's going down and vice versa, and you can offset or mitigate risk or volatility inside of the portfolio. That's the theory, mm-hmm. right? It's not necessarily what happens in real life. No. So what, what, what kind of bond environment? Let's, let's go to bond. If, if you were going to describe to your three wonderful daughters mm-hmm. what a bond was, what would you tell them? A uh, bond is actually lending money to a company. So let's say we take Apple stock. Uh, everybody's heard of Apple, the iPhone, and they've got a big project that they're trying to work on, maybe build a brand new building, and they don't want to use cash. Uh, they will go and issue a bond so that they can get investors to help facilitate that so that they're not using the cash. And then what does the investor get? The investor gets interest or coupons. We call them coupons. So it's paid out usually semi-annually, and it's in the form of uh, two payments generally every every semi-annual. Now, can the value of my bond go up and down? It can. How does that happen? It is. It, it really depends on what's happening with interest rates. So as interest rates tend to rise, and we're starting to uh, we'll start to see that potentially in the future. Prices of bonds, the value will go down. As interest rates go up, the value of bonds go down. The value of existing. We need to add that Correct. word that's inside yes. of there. So, you know, you hear about the move. We talk about on the market carver a lot. And if you don't get that already, remember, that's a free video newsletter that either myself or our chief investment officer, Adam Harder, yeah. Uh, one of the two of us do that video every week. It's free. You can go to yourlifeafterwork.com, get signed up for it. Happy to have you along. But when we when we put that video out and we talk about it, one of Adam's primary interest in life is bonds. And it has mm-hmm. been in the 20 years that he's worked with me, you know, at the Financial Enhancement Group. And he, again, is one of my partners. And when we when you look at that bond environment, as interest rates fluctuate, the value of existing bonds go up and down. And so when you hear something you know, Aaron said you could lend money to companies. Very, very true. Um, but you can also do it to municipalities to build bro- roads and bridges and libraries or the federal government in terms of treasuries. One of the things we talk about a lot is a concept of a 10-year U.S. Treasury. 
Mm-hmm. Now, when I became a certified financial planner back in the mid '90s, that was deemed as a risk-free investment, right? Because when we when we try to figure out whether we're going to pay off debt or whether we're going to invest in the stock market or whether we're going to buy a bond, we want to say, well, what would the risk-free rate? That was always a ten-year U.S. Treasury, mm-hmm. right? So late last year, right before the the election, uh, the presidential election, you watched the a 10-year U.S. Treasury be below, let's just call it 75 basis points or three quarters of a percent. Uh, Today, it's a full percent higher than that as of the time of the taping of this show. Mm -hmm. Now, one percent. Who you know, you're thinking about your 401k, and you know, Joe, it kind of move. It can move two or three percent in a week, and you're talking about a one percent move. Well, one percent move on a bond is an amazing, amazing. It's you don't see this a lot in the short-term period of time that we've had it, Mm -hmm. right? So we're going to go from bonds to stocks real quickly. And you've probably heard, and I talked about it on the market cover this week, you know, the GameStop saga, the the things that were going on with hedge funds that were blowing up because of events late on a a Friday evening. Um, Those sound exciting and interesting, and they get all the headlines. Trust me, trust me, what's going on inside of the fixed income environment can be just as exciting and that means op- opportunity or scary on both sides. So, so now we're back to the three girls, Aaron. Tell me what a stock is. Stock is simple. It's ownership in a company. Uh, you want to buy into a you company. You took 33 years of my <laughs> occupational addiction and called it simple. But it really is. Yeah. Right? You, you buy shares in a company somehow or another, and, uh, and you own stock. So what happens with that? What's that mean? What is the stock? Yeah, mean? you own. So you own part of a company. You own a, a little sliver or a big piece. What's it mean? It means you have, you know, you have the ability to participate in what that company does for the future. So you could have appreciation if the stock goes up. You can have appreciation in the price of that. Now, does the stock always go up just because the company did better? Absolutely not. Yeah. So you have volatility that you have to worry about, and uh, there's a whole lot of moving pieces. And I did make a simple comment, buying the stock simple. There we go. Owning the stock is complex. Having the discipline yes. to do the right thing with the stock at the right time. And that doesn't always mean holding through a tsunami, by the way. Um, there there are a whole series of metrics we use the financial enhancement group. I am the, the the one in pretty much in charge of what we call the narrative or macroeconomics, the big picture things. Uh, Adam is our CFA. Uh, it takes care of the fundamental drivers, the valuation in terms of what it's with or what it's worth at the time. And then Andrew Thrasher is our chartered market technician. He just looks at what the market is doing relative to itself and the internal components each and every day, reminding us all of the time that some of the best bull market returns have occurred in the middle of bear markets. And some of the worst bull market returns have existed in the middle of a bull market when you didn't understand the volatility or what's going on. My friend, uh, friend used to always tell me, if you didn't understand what took a stock up, you'll never understand what took it back down. That's a good point. So when you look at stocks and bonds, here's how I want you to contrast this. Yes, inside of your portfolio, uh, you want to have both stocks and bonds. I have never been 100% equity. I've never been 100% fixed income. I will probably die being neither. The old school belief Mm -hmm. is the older you are, the more fixed income or bonds you should own right? The theory being that you would clip the coupons and take the payments uh, to be able to get through retirement, if you will. Not much different than what you'd get on a CD interest from that perspective. And that the equity was kind of the driver, if you will. Well, what I will tell you after 33 years of doing this, what I will tell you is you have to have a coordinated attack to be able to manage the amount of stocks and bonds you have at any given moment, We do not believe at the Financial Enhancement Group that money is a function of age, Mm -hmm. meaning that the assets that you have, the mixture you have, is more dependent on other things than just your age, right? It just really is. And and the example I've always used on this radio show, Aaron, when Barb's grandma passed away at 98, Mm -hmm. she had 70% of her money in equities. It's because her standard of living was being met. She was already taken care of. Which would my mother-in-law rather have inherited, right? CDs that were paying 4% or a market in the middle of the 2000s that was doing quite fine. Sure. Thank you very much. Yep. Right? So we want to manage money accordingly. Diversification matters. As I've written in the newspaper multiple times, it's the only free lunch. 
right? So you do want to own a combination of different types of assets that are going on in there, but do not get caught up in this belief that one is quote unquote safer than the other. Uh, and I don't have time to take you through where the word risk entered into the market, but that was mm -hmm. back in the, uh, the fireside chats and FDR, um, that we can do that another day. But what would you tell um, somebody who was coming in who needed to be able to take income out of their portfolio? Uh, is, there a, is there a number that we typically use as a split? No, I mean, there's not a number. It is very much unique to your situation. We look at everybody differently, and we want to make sure the level of risk that we're working with inside of the portfolios for that specific individual is customized to them. So um, it is very, very driven on that person that's in, in front of us. As fiduciaries, our yes. job is to treat your money as if it were our money and we were in the same situation. And we aren't married to anything but our wives, right? When we buy an investment, we know, and one of the things we think about before we buy it is how do we get out of this? Mm -hmm. Same thing when we buy a bond. We want to be able to navigate that portfolio based on what's happening at the economy at the time. It's, this is not something that you should be able to check a box, put on hold, and let it go. We're going to talk about that when we get into the fees and expenses and mm -hmm. some of the stories around it, some of the things that have changed over 33 years of doing what I do. I think a lot of times, Aaron, people make decisions today based on things they learned in the past. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that you're up to date, present, and future. Go to yourlifeafterwork.com. You can get more information there. Find our YouTube video. And don't forget to sign up for the podcast while you're there. Consider this program.